I know you have a, a son went to college already, right? Yes. Uh, would you also like to talk about the, the uh, what kind of investment uh, you do to your uh, son? Because the other day when my friends and I discussed about the, the kids education and uh, we did talk about American education versus the Chinese education, I, I really want to learn uh, what do you do uh, to your son? So, you know, the, the, the interesting thing when you have kids, you mm -hmm. form this very unusual feeling for them, which is this unconditional love that you have for your kids. And it doesn't matter, whatever they do, you will love them, right? You, you can't, it's, it's like this, it's an amazing feeling. And everybody that doesn't have kids, I try to explain it and they like, yeah, yeah. It's like, so you have this unconditional love. You want to support them for anything they want to do uh, within reason. If you support them the right way, they will make the right decisions. They will make you super proud of everything they do. So I, I support any type of education that my son wants to get into. He started out in one college and he transferred to another college because he preferred another college and with mm -hmm. the new college, he was able to also play soccer, which is important. And then next steps, you know, is will he get a master's? Will he get a job? Um, college in America is super expensive. You have to, you have to support that initiative as well, which is fine. It's just, uh, it, it's a life changing experience for them. I went to school in Italy, so I, I would have loved to go to college in America. <coughs> But my son is doing that for me. So I, I, I experience it and uh, mm -hmm. it's very, very cool. So I support him 100%. And it's, that's just apparent to, to, yeah. to yeah. child feeling. I, I, yeah. yeah, I, I'm learning that. <laughs> I, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. There's rumor said uh, American parents will kick their kids out when they turn to uh, 18 years old. So that's, that's, a, that's another truth, right? Well, you know, at uh, 17, 18, they go to college. So they are out of the house. Mm -hmm. There is this belief in America that kids have to form their own path. Um, you know, being from Italy, kids live at home till they're 40, and that's not good either. So you have the extremes. Um, in America at 18, you're going to college, you're on your own, you're living with other kids, you mm -hmm. can get in trouble, you could be a very good student, you could be a bad student. Uh, and in Europe, you're living with your parents till you're 30, 40 years old. Uh, if I had to pick between the two, I would pick the American model. Um, parents, regardless of where you are in the world, love their kids. That's, there's no question about that. So. Nobody wants to kick their own kids out of the house when they're 18 or 19. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy into that theory. It's just a different way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. There's, the, there's this, this belief in America that, you know, the American way, the new generation has to be more successful than the previous generation. And that's, that's what, uh, you know, we push. We push our kids to do better than what we're doing. So mm -hmm. no. We support them. I have concerns there about, there about the kids. Uh, really, they are e very easy to access the drugs. Um, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a concern that every parent will have. Um, it's, but it comes down to you know what values do you impart to your kids at home, um, and that that is a fundamental belief. If if your if your family is, is united and strong, and your 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 values and core you know, is, is, is good. The kids will be fine. They'll, they'll know how to recognize good things and bad things. It's tough today because of all the, the social media and everything that happens, but you can spot right away um, kids that don't have any issues. When I was young, I was very shy, which is hard to believe, right? You are. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? I was very shy. I, I, I would go to the store with my sister and I would tell her to go in the store and buy something because I, I did not want to, I was, I was tremendously shy. 
So I was not, I was not totally comfortable in my own skin. And then I look at my son, he's, he's totally comfortable in, in who he is, the friends he has, the choices he makes. And it's, it's like, it's amazing to see. And you know that they're sound choices and they're, they're... so I think it, 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 if the family values are good, your kids will be perfectly fine. They know how to spot bad things and they will stay away from it. Regardless of drugs are easy to find or hard to find, they could be hard to find and they'll still find them if they want them. And if they're easy to find, they will stay away from them because they just say, that's not me. I'm not, I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you have to trust in, in decision-making and uh, yeah, I think it comes with, from the parents. In America, the big thing is for kids to drink and to do drugs. It's this party, party mentality. You know, there are party schools and it's underage drinking and, and all of this, which happens a lot. I'm not sure I get it. And in Italy, there's no age for drinking. You could drink at eight years old if you want. You could go to yeah. a bar and, yeah. and, and therefore it makes it like, what's the big deal? There's no big deal in drinking a beer in Italy and nobody and young kids don't drink. They just don't care. Right. Here you put a law in place that says you can't drink. And therefore, if you drink, you get in trouble. And of course, what do kids do? They want to do, they want to get in trouble. So they, they could be a, a lot more clever in changing some of the things and, and allowing people to make their decisions and live with them. But it would be much easier if they got rid of these old, old rules that don't, are not right. necessary, in my opinion. I agree. Chan, we don't have that role either. Especially when I was 18 years old, I drank a lot. Not because, <laughs> because I have kind of 18 years old, because uh, at that age, we are all uh, graduated or, you know, we'll go to college. So we have kind of party with uh, friends together. That's why we have like a couple of uh, maybe a couple of beers. That's it. Yeah. 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 And it's part of life, right? You have to go through it. You have to, you have to go through these experiences and make your mistakes again. You have to have good friends that protect you, mm -hmm. but you have to make the mistakes in life and get through it and, and learn from it. Cause if you yeah. don't, then it's, it's even more challenging. You have to create these, these experiences in life that uh, you don't want to go through again. So people that don't do anything in life never make mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And that's true in life. It's true at work. If at work, you never make a mistake, that means you're not doing much. So if you make mistakes, it's like you're trying to do things, you're trying to change, you're trying to make, and it's bound that you make mistakes. I make mistakes every day and it's like, okay, yeah. And I keep, in, I keep it in perspective. If I'm a, a brain surgeon and I make a mistake, it's very bad. If I make a mistake on, on a pattern that, you know, the coat is a little bit big or small, okay, we are making clothing. Let's keep it in perspective. So that it, that's important to, to know your surroundings, know the moment you're living in and the, and the gravity of certain things. So mm -hmm. don't, you should never take yourself too seriously in life. That's yeah, American parents normally invest a lot to to have their kids to do the sports. Uh, are mm -hmm. they? My question is, uh, they do these investment because they want their kid to kids to have fun, to have a, a like a a skill, uh, and then later on they can join a club, and uh, you know it's more like a social skill to make friends or they want their kids go to college to be able to have the scholarship. Well, no, parents realize that the, the likelihood of getting a scholarship in sports is very low. It's, it's, oh. it's hard. It's very hard. Um, unless you're like one of the small percentages, single digit percentages of, of athletes that are really good. Um, playing sports I think is a really good thing for kids from a social uh, perspective. You know, they, they learn early in America what, what the meaning of team sports is. Um, and you have young, young, you know, 17, 18 year old kids that are so much more mature when it comes to respect for others, your teammates, and, and not to do this, not to do that. 
a lot more mature, I feel, in, in the U.S. because of sports. And it's, uh, you know, they become competitive, which is important. So in career, they become competitive. Um, but, you know, you can have parents that are pushing kids to do more than what they really want to do. One sport, two sport, three sports. It's not because a kid wants to do it. It's because a parent wants to keep their kids busy so they can do their own life. So there's, there's a fine line there. You know, my son plays soccer. I, he's been playing soccer since he was five, but he always did it because he wanted to and he enjoyed it. And the kids that he played with when he's five years old, he's still friends with, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. So it's, it's uh, you, you need to know how to take it. Scholarships don't come into play. It's, it's a great experience that they go through for your, you know, middle school, high school sports. Uh, the pride in, in American schools for, for sports is, is, is very cool. It's a, it's a nice feeling. I, I like it a lot. And then eventually college. Uh, mm -hmm. But education is, you know, if you ask me the differences between education in Europe and, and America, they're big. They're very big. Is, is the quality of education different? Yes. Is one better than the other? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that because in America, everything is so very focused on a speciality and, and one thing that you're studying. In Italy, we have this broad education of everything. You know, you go down to the, the Chinese dynasties, dynasties, and then you go up to, you know, the war in, in Iraq. So you cover all the things that are happening in the world. In America, it's more specific. You, you mm -hmm. really, you have to self-educate if you're interested in World War I, World War II, or mm -hmm. anything about what's going on. Whereas in, in Italy, you take this general education of, uh, of so you're perhaps better prepared for the world with an education in Europe, but you're better prepared for a professional interaction in the US maybe. So it's different. Mm -hmm. You form more of a culture in Europe. Your culture really comes into play mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I, that's, I went to school there and, and the culture element of it is, you know, you, you learn about your culture. It's important. In America, culture is, I don't know if there's a culture in America. That's the thing. <laughs> uh, uh, Only like 300 years, right? Exactly. So, so what, is, what is the culture? You know, it's, uh, it's such a young country, but at the same time, it's an old country from an interest infrastructure. You go to New York, you get in the subway. And it's like, wow, this is the first subway. Well, London was, but it's over 150 years old. And it's like, wow, how did they build this back then? It's super old. Mm -hmm. You go to, the, to, to Shanghai and look at the subway. It's 20 years old. And it's like super cool, modern, Wi-Fi, super fast. And all that. I'm like, yeah, this is a subway, not New York. <laughs> <laughs> but the contrast is it was built like 150 years ago in New York and it's falling apart. So the culture of, of, uh, of education, I think, is, is very important. And I, I like that part in Europe. In America, it's, it's missing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Andre. I, I feel uh, it's a great honor to talk to you today and uh, have your precious time here with me. Um, I hope my audience really enjoyed it. Thank you for your time. Fung Fung, thank you very much. This was fun. Anytime we can talk about many things and uh, I will like to be back if there's another uh, opportunity. Really? Yes, sure. absolutely. I will invite you back for sure. Yeah. No problem. Anytime. All right. Then I will talk to you next time. Okay, Fung Fung. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.